Hey guys, welcome back to Fujo TV. And if you're as jealous of all the stuff surrounding me right now, well good, you should be. Okay, so today we're actually not going to be doing a product review on all these video cards. We're actually going to be doing a bit of a how-to and I guess some tips on how to choose the right video card for you. Now of course there's so many different types of video cards on the market from you know, some of the lower end to the very high end stuff. And I guess making a choice can be, you know, quite a daunting task. It's, it's not an easy, you know, decision to make. But in actuality, it's actually not that tough when you're looking at the right information and you're asking yourself the right questions. So today we're going to go over a couple of those and uh, hopefully we can help you choose the right video card. So whether you're buying a new pre-made computer or if you want to build your own or even if you want to upgrade an older system, the process of choosing a brand new graphics or the right graphics can be a little bit overwhelming at the start. One thing that you guys shouldn't even have to consider though is considering or going with integrated graphics which comes with uh, most standard PCs. The problem is because it has trouble playing you know, games from three years ago or five years ago, or even games from today. So of course, uh, you know, it's doubtful that it'll be able to handle anything, especially for the future. But on top of all that, you know, you still have to consider the biggest issue is the price. The price range is so huge and so wide that you know, that alone can already be an issue or a headache on its own. But the point I'm trying to make is you want to make the right choice, but the question is how? All right, so the first thing you want to do is to actually just stop, take a moment, take a deep breath, and look at the video card as a video card. What I mean by this is, you know, things could get very confusing when you start reading stuff on the bots or on the internet, especially when you look at all the different uh, numerical numbers you give each card, like GTS 680, HD 7970, 560, 6790, and you have things like GeForce, Radeon, uh, the brands, you know, SFS, Sapphire, all these different things, you know, it can get really nightmarish at the very start, you know, especially when you're looking even more technical, such as chipsets, clock speeds. So all these things, for the time being, ignore all the technical stuff. Just look at the video card as a video card. The next thing you want to do is uh, set certain goals. So ask yourself some questions like, uh, what am I going to be using the video card for? Do I need it? Uh, what applications? What sort of games do I want to play? Do you want to play high-end stuff like maybe like Battlefield or lower-end things that don't need you know, a powerful card such as you know, Minecraft? And the next thing you want to do is you know, look at I guess, the card itself. Do I need two display ports? Do I need HDMI? Am I going to be playing on a TV or a standard monitor? Things like that. Just ask yourself these questions and you know, answer them accordingly. And the last thing you want to do is give yourself price goals. Price goals as in how much you really want to spend on the video card. If you're looking to buy a pre-made system, you know, you, there's not too much flexibility you can do because, it, as I said, it's pre-made. But if you're looking to build your own system or upgrade, 200 bucks is usually a pretty good starting point. That can sort of help you get um, you know, up to date on the more modern games, at least for the next couple of years. But if you want to spend less, spend more, that's up to you. you know, it's your budget, but uh, price yourself accordingly and stick to that goal. Another thing to keep in mind is you don't have to sort of stick to a particular brand, uh, especially when it comes to you know, ATI or NVIDIA, especially if you've used them in the past, uh, you know, friends recommend it. Like, don't feel that you need to stick to a particular brand for any you know, particular reason. You have to look at it as what you need, what you want, and which company can offer you that, especially when you're talking about goals and uh, pricing and all that sort of stuff. So now that you've laid out your plans and your goals, it's time to jump straight into sorting out the various different types of cards on the market. The first thing to consider is the brands. The, big, the biggest two on the market are NVIDIA and ATI. And each one has their own naming system or number system to sort of differentiate between all the different models. This is where things can get sort of confusing. Now right away you would think that the higher the number, the better the performance or the, or the more expensive, things like that. But in actuality that's not the case at all. There are some instances where you would think the 7970 is better than the 680 just because of the extra digit. And then there are also times where they would add you know, different suffixes to the end of uh, each model number, such as uh, GT or GTS. And these are not really indications that they might be better, they might just be tweaked versions, stuff like that. So there's a lot of different things you have to look at when you're considering you know, the number system. Okay, so to recap, the way to approach the numbering system of the models of all the different cards is to ignore them. Yes, they do provide some meaning and it helps sort of differentiate between all the different cards. But unless you're really hard toward your computers and especially your graphics cards, you know, looking at the model numbers or even the specifications on the box won't really give you much to take home with, you know, especially when you come into a decision. I guess the best way to sort of look at it is, for example, pizza. You know, there's so many different types of pizzas and toppings and all that stuff out there. And the only way you're going to be able to actually, you know, choose is to maybe do like a taste test. Try, all the, try the different pizzas you, you like. And that way you'll have sort of an idea of what's good and what you, pref uh, what you would prefer. When it comes back to the world of video cards, you can sort of do taste testing in the form of 
benchmarks. There are you know, a lot of people out there that do the work for you in terms of how to test out the video card, performance, power up, all that stuff that you know, gives you all the information you would need to help you make the right decision. So as I mentioned earlier with the whole taste testing and pizza thing, with video cards it's a little bit different. You, know, you can't exactly ask them to try it out at the store before you decide to buy. But what you can do and the easiest thing is to have someone basically do the homework for you. And fortunately there's already sites out there that do this. There are plenty of sites out there that do something called benchmarking, where they take all the graphical hardware and the, gra and the video card and run it through a number of tests and place all the numbers and information out on the chart to help you show where your you know, decided card may be compared to some of the higher and lower end and where it stands overall on the market. So what you think you can do is, for example, let's just say you want to play Diablo 3 at a fairly you know, high setting, but your budget is only $200. What you can do is go to one of these graph um, sorry, benchmarking sites type in the game, and they'll find and they'll show you all the charts and information uh, you know, of all the tests they've done for this particular card, where it stands overall. Once you've found you know, your card on the list, you're basically done. You know where it stands, you know what it can and cannot do, and that's what helps you, you know, make the decision a lot easier. And now the next thing that, or basically the last thing you have to really worry about is buying for the future. What this means is, you know, don't save a couple of dollars. It's not worth saving a few bucks if your card is going to become obsolete within the next three to six months especially when there's going to be title games coming out within the next year and you want to make sure that your money is you know, spent on something that will last and will be able to keep up with the next generation of games. So basically no matter how cheap it is, it's not worth it to spend, you know, save a few bucks now if you're going to be spending money again uh, within the next six months to buy a card that you didn't want to play you know, the next generation game. But at the same time, that's not to say that buying a higher end card or even a top of the line card is a bad idea. If you do that, you know, you're basically securing yourself for the future, especially if you don't plan to upgrade an entire system for the next, you know, five, six, seven years. That way you're sort of set and you don't have to worry about spending more money and even going through the headache again of trying to pick up, you know, one of the various 10,000 cards that, the next, that will be coming out in the next few years. So at the end of the day, if you still can't decide which card to go with, your last resort is to go with an expert. Now, a lot of the sites that we talked about that do these benchmarking, you know, tests and all that, they also write up a lot of guides on a lot of different graphic cards on both ends of the spectrum, whether the high end or low end. And no matter which end, you know, what type of card they're going with, these guys definitely know what they're talking about. Looking at it this way, they're basically going into writing these guys the same way you are. They're looking at all the different options on the market, but with a bit more knowledge. And definitely that's something to consider when you're trying to read up on these and, and make a final decision. Alright guys, so I hope you found something in this video useful in how to pick up a video card. If you guys have any more specific questions or anything video card or even hardware related, you know, you can do so through our Twitter or our Facebook or even just send us an email. But we recently launched our Voodoo forum. So if you guys want to register, sign up, we have a tech discussion forum with tech support, gadgets, hardware, everything, a whole bunch of topics for everyone. Uh, other than that, you know, be sure to comment, subscribe, and be sure to check out our blog. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.